Republicans are describing Mitt Romney's selection of Paul Ryan as bold. Democrats are calling it risky. The race to define Paul Ryan is on. We are going to break down the Ryan selection and answer your questions in this special Saturday edition of the Video Crystal Ball. All vice presidential selections are inherently surprising because uh, they're made by one person, the nominee, and obviously nobody other than a handful of people at the top of a campaign really know in advance. But I think this one was more surprising than most. Uh, most individuals who uh, knew Romney in politics and in business called him cautious. Well, this is not a cautious choice. Romney decided to go bold, and uh, this is going to have uh, positive and negative implications for his campaign. I think the most important things to remember about this choice is, first of all, it's a national pick. This is not a state pick. It's not a, a Rob Portman uh, pick designed to win Ohio, for example. Uh, yes, there may be uh, a plus in Wisconsin, but this isn't about Wisconsin. It isn't about the Rust Belt. It's about big issues, big things like the debt, like the fiscal crisis, uh, about changing the tone in the campaign. And the second thing that's most important about this choice is it suggests that the Romney campaign sees the election as a battle of the party bases. It's the Democratic base versus the Republican base. Why? First of all, there are very few undecideds and swing voters, no matter what some of these polls are telling you. We're literally in the low to mid single digits among undecideds. Uh, the vast majority of voters, 90 to 95% have already made up their minds. So if it's a battle of the bases, then it's a battle of turnout. Which party base is more enthused? Which party base will work harder? Which party base will have a higher turnout? The Romney campaign clearly believes that adding Paul Ryan enthuses Republican conservatives who've never been crazy about Mitt Romney, causes them to work harder, pumps up the turnout, and enables them to win the war of the bases. It's very rare for a House member to be selected. Uh, you have to go back uh, to 1984 for the last case when Geraldine Ferraro was picked by Walter Mondale on the Democratic side. Uh, and we know how that went. Uh, in fact, uh, Mondale and Ferraro didn't even carry New York. Uh, prior to that was the last Republican example, 1964, when nominee Barry Goldwater uh, picked Congressman Bill Miller a very little known uh, congressman from New York State. And of course, the Republicans didn't carry New York. So those are two bad precedents. But if you go back to the last House member who was picked and elected, that would of course be John Nance Garner, who was Speaker of the House when Franklin Roosevelt picked him in 1932. And he and Roosevelt went on to two victories in 32 and 36 for president and vice president. Every vice presidential candidate has pluses and has minuses. You know, Mother Teresa is not available for these selections. In Paul Ryan's case, inevitably, his 14-year record in Congress is going to be an issue. There are thousands of votes for the Democrats to mine. Obviously, today we're focusing on uh, Ryan's vote for the auto bailout, his vote for TARP, uh, but I guarantee you there are many, many technical votes that most of us would never remember, but the Democratic opposition researchers will find and you'll be seeing them in TV ads and used on the stump. So there's plenty to vet on Paul Ryan, just as there would have been for any nominee. Many people are suggesting today that the fact that Romney picked Ryan means that Romney deep down thinks that he can't win with a safe choice, that he needs to go big and bold to shake things up, kind of like McCain did with Palin. I tend to think that's a misreading. Uh, you know, other than maybe Barry Goldwater, I don't think there's been a modern presidential nominee who didn't deep down think he was going to win. That includes Bob Dole in 96. It even includes George McGovern, who really believed that somehow he would win in 72. So I think Romney, who has a, a much better reason to think that he might actually win in the end, uh, believes that he is looking not simply for a running mate, but a governing partner. Uh, he and Ryan uh, think alike in a lot of ways. They're very data-oriented. 
uh, they care about fiscal matters. Uh, it's a good match intellectually for the rigors and the challenges of the presidency should they be elected. To me, that's the best explanation, but there may be other layers of reasons that we don't yet know. And now, as we always do when we have a video crystal ball, we include your questions sent to us on Twitter. Here's a sampling that we're going to answer today. Question one. How much does the Ryan pick really change this presidential race? At the very least, is Wisconsin now lean Republican? We're going to be watching the Wisconsin round of new polls very, very closely. The norm is that a new presidential selection can give you a bounce, particularly in the home state of the candidate. That doesn't always happen. And sometimes when it happens, it's just a point or two. The real clear politics average right now is Obama ahead about 4.8% in Wisconsin. I doubt seriously that Ryan gives Romney a five point plus bounce in Wisconsin. Eventually he may, we don't know. Uh, but it, it's not just about winning Wisconsin, it's also about keeping it close, causing the Obama-Biden team to spend precious campaign time and precious campaign money defending what is normally a blue state. Although we need to remember in 2000 and 2004, uh, the Democrats won Wisconsin, but by two tenths of 1% and four tenths of 1%. Wisconsin can be very, very close. It may be again, we'll have to see. The second question is, any possibility that Paul Ryan has a Palin effect where he actually becomes greater than the presidential candidate. Well, that's certainly happening today in certain circles, and there's no question that conservatives are over the moon about Paul Ryan. That's a place they've never been about Mitt Romney. But they also give Romney credit, obviously, for picking Ryan. Uh, look, inevitably, as the campaign moves on, the vice presidential candidates will move into the background. It always happens. It's going to happen this year. You have on October 11th, the vice presidential debate. That will probably be the high point for these two vice presidential candidates and for Paul Ryan. In the end, as always, it's a choice between the two presidential nominees. Now, the third question from Twitter. Does Paul Ryan's pick suggest that Mitt Romney is not sure the election is simply a referendum on President Obama's economic performance? Therefore, that it has to be a choice election, a choice between Romney and Obama. Every election is a combination of a referendum on the incumbent party's performance, but also a choice between the incumbent party's nominee and the challenger. I think it's important for Mitt Romney uh, to uh, show that he has a vision for America too. And I don't think that's come across in this campaign yet. How could it when the entire campaign has been focused on gaffes and negative TV ads? So the Romney pick does enable Romney uh, to present uh, Paul Ryan and his budget as part of the Romney vision, an alternative governing plan for America. Uh, that, that will help to uh, enrich the dialogue during the campaign. I don't think though that it changes uh, the basis of an election involving an incumbent coming up for re-election. Because in the end, most people say, do we want the incumbent to continue for four years? Are we better off than we were four years ago? Or do we want to change? And so while both pieces of the equation matter, uh, the referendum on the incumbent is the more important piece. And now I'm going to turn this over to my terrific crystal ball colleagues, Kyle Kondik, and Jeff Skelly, and each of them will also answer one of the questions you sent to us on Twitter. Now we have a Twitter question from user Aerofanatic14M, who asks, when is the last time Wisconsin and Michigan went for opposite candidates in a presidential election? Uh, the answer is 1988. Uh, that year, Michael Dukakis uh, won Wisconsin by about three and a half percentage points, and George H.W. Bush carried Michigan by about eight. Um, obviously, with Paul Ryan on the ticket, uh, Republicans are hopeful that Wisconsin might go red this time. Uh, consider this fact. John Kerry and Al Gore only won Wisconsin by less than half a percentage point each. Uh, so obviously there's, there are reasons for Republicans to be hopeful that perhaps Paul Ryan could add the extra oomph to put them over the top in uh, the Badger State. 
Of course, they'd also like to be competitive in Michigan, where Mitt Romney grew up. However, that may be a tougher haul. Uh, it's gone more Democratic in every election since 1992 than Wisconsin. So we'll have to see. And now I'm going to toss it over to my colleague, Kyle Kondik, for another question. Our final question is this. Uh, how does Paul Ryan's selection affect the Democrats' chances in the House? Uh, Democrats are very, very happy that Paul Ryan was selected. Uh, in fact, the communications director for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee was tweeting uh, on Saturday morning that he's saying this is my, what uh, Christmas morning must feel like. Uh, the reason why Democrats are so excited is because they have been trying to nationalize uh, the House races by running against Paul Ryan's budget, which would make uh, uh, major changes to Medicare and, and, and has some other um, uh, provisions that Democrats want to try to run against. And so with Ryan at the top of the ticket, uh, it's easier for them to run against the Ryan budget, which virtually all of the Republicans in the House voted for. Uh, whether that changes the calculus in the House remains to be seen. Uh, I still think Republicans are pretty strong favorites uh, to hold their majority in the House. Thanks again for joining us for another uh, edition of the Video Crystal Ball. Uh, and make sure to follow the Crystal Ball as we go to the conventions in a few weeks. Uh, and keep sending us your questions, and we'll talk to you again soon.